ureters, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. You also have some other structures that are not urinary system, but they're closely uh, located to the urinary system, such as the adrenal glands, the prostate gland. You have here the renal vein and renal artery, and so forth. Okay? But the urinary system is, consists of the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. Now let's look at the kidney very quickly. The kidney has two main segments, the renal cortex and the renal medulla. With that model, let's turn over here, we can see the parts of the kidney much more clearly. This is the renal cortex and the renal medulla. Now in the medulla, you will have these structures here called renal pyramids or medullary pyramids. They have a triangular shape okay, with a base at this end and the apex at this end. And at the apex, if you look over here, this is the apex of this pyramid, you have a drain-like structure called the renal papilla. Okay? Each one will have a renal papilla, each medullary pyramid. Right here's another renal papilla. Now the renal papilla will drain the urine through it and into this thin tube right here. These thin tubes are called minor calluses. Minor calluses or one minor calyx. Okay, minor callus, calyx, minor calluses. The minor calluses then merge together to form a bigger tube right here, or right here, you can see very clearly right here, called the major calyx. Then all the major calyxes come together and form this funnel shaped structure here called the renal pelvis. This is the renal pelvis. Okay? Uh, let's see. Now, let's look at the kidney one more time. Over here you have these structures here in between the pyramids. You have this renal tissue here in between the pyramids. They look like columns. They're called renal columns. This one's a clear one to see. A renal column right here. This one is clear also. Renal column. Okay? And the stripe-like appearance of the pyramids is due to the fact that you have here many different tubes, especially these long tubes called the collected ducts. This is a bigger representation of one small area of the kidney. Okay? Uh, so if this is uh, going back to the kidney here, uh, this would be then the first portion of the ureter, the ureter. Okay? Now, this part of the model we'll use so that we can explain the nephron, okay? Which are the anatomical functional units of the kidneys? This is where urine is actually formed. And here with the nephron, you will have several different portions. First, you have the glomerulus and the glomerular capsule, or also called Bauman's capsule. They form a unit like this, or like this, much larger, called the renal corpuscle. Then you have the first part of the tube here, of the nephron. This is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have the loop of Henle. And then you have the distal convoluted tubule right here. Finally, the distal tubules from different nephrons are going to empty the urine into this large tube here called the collectin duct. This is the collectin duct. Do you see these things with this model? Not very clearly. You can see some of these white tubes here that represent collectin ducts. And these perhaps are loop of Henleys. But this is the portion of the model that you would use to, to see the nephron and the parts of the nephron. Okay? Now, finally, with this model, you can see the renal corpuscle much more clearly. The renal corpuscle, you have a glomerulus and the Bauman's capsule here. Okay? The glomerulus is formed by an afferent arteriole and an efferent arteriole here. Uh, you can also see parts of the other parts of the nephron, such as a small portion of the proximal tubule. 
and a small segment or portion of the distal convoluted tubule. I think the rest is not visible here, so you would have to use this model to see the different parts of the nephron more clearly. Okay, and I think that's about it, really. Um, yeah, I guess you can cut right here.